and welcome back to the You Up podcast. I'm Jordana Abraham. And I am Jared Fried. It is so good to be back here with you, Jordana. How are you? What's going on? You went with beachy wavy curls. I haven't worn my hair curly, I think, on this show, like, ever. So. I don't think so either. Yeah. And when I walked in, it, you know, it's one of those things as a guy who's uh, aware of the female world that yeah. you go... Just don't say anything. <laughs> Back away. I, 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 you know, because you just don't right. know. I what don't know the, what the, the. I'm protocol. not even sure what to make of it. I don't think I've ever done this before. But what it's was funny. In, what, so what happened this morning? Story. Aileen and I. Mm. I don't know. I'm bringing Aileen into this. Aileen and I have extremely curly hair. Okay. Like in high school, we had like very intense like ringlets. We used to we use like entire bottles of LA looks to like <laughs> get our hair. It would be like sticky. It'd be like we, okay. we didn't really know how to do it. Um. And since then, you know, once we started wanting men to like us, we, <laughs> it felt like at that time you had to straighten your hair. Right. At the time of puberty. Yes. A, a little fairy godmother comes like, over and goes, straighten your hair. I don't know, it felt like that was like, it felt, and I mean, again, I'm not saying that it is. I think that that's just how it felt at the time. Like it felt mm. like it was like not as attractive as the girls with straight Listen, hair. Listen, I, I, we are of similar generation. I'm a little older, but mm -hmm. like the idea of like the keratin treat, what do they call it? The... What is it called? Smooth, carrot yeah, carrot treatment, treatment and yeah. the uh, what was it? The the Japanese hair straightening mm -hmm. was like a big part the of people's yeah. lives and going in every. I, I'm aware of this because I had female friends growing up, right. and this was this was stuff that got brought up. Totally, um, and that's kind of like again. I don't not, I don't think that I don't think that curly hair is unattractive, but that is how how we felt at the time. Again, I'm making this about us. She's gonna be like, "Why are you including me in this?" Um, <laughs> But, Aileen's vulnerabilities <laughs> being brought up without her consent. Yeah. yeah. So I've been getting like keratin or like Japanese straightening or right. like all that stuff for since I was in high school. And I'm kind of like, let's see what happens naturally. Let's go au, au, au natural, yes. so to speak. No, listen, I am I am uh, big on hair changes. Mm -hmm. I think all men are. I think men love a switch up. Yeah. Like to speak to like things I hear from women. That are like, I would never have my hair curly. I'm like, why not? You know, like, let's go right. for it. Let's make some, take some shots here. Why not? Right. right? Yeah. Like, let's see how it feels. I mean, again, I kind of, I think I, I'm not sure if I prefer it straight or if I prefer it straight because it's been so deeply ingrained in me that I've like believed that. It's but I think it looks kind of nice now. I don't know. I think it looks great. Thank I, you. I just, you walk, I just think with like, I always just like, you look great is like my, my, <laughs> What, I if just, you, what if I, I, I didn't I, look great? What if you hated it? What would if you I look, hated you look it, great? You I don't still, hate it. You would still say you look great, though. I would still say you look great. Yeah, I would right. never get It'd into it. would be like, what it. would you tell a bride on her wedding day? You look amazing. amazing. Yeah. Right. I, I did. Uh, speaking so, of which, speaking great, of great brides, trans, amazing transition. Good we transition. Do the, big recap day. We've got we've to do it. Well, so you had a girl's trip. Your tan looks great. That that I know to compliment. That's been. How was the girl's trip? The girl's Yeah, we'll do mine. It's probably shorter. The girls' trip was amazing. I had such a fun time. Do you feel like, was it one of those that, like, sometimes you get back from vacation and you're like, cup is full. Like, yeah. I, I feel I got my friend time. Totally. I got my hot goss. I can go back to my married life in the burbs and not feel like I'm so far away from the life of friends and all that stuff. Yeah, I think that was a big part of it. It was just like, it was like the perfect situation. It was like hot weather. Mm. We're in the pool. We're drinking and we're catching up for like three days. And you needed it. Yeah. And it's not like you're catching up with people refreshed. you saw. You know, right. I, yes. I, I, it's a good different catch up 35. Yeah. I think so. And I saw the pictures. I got, I was brought back to the three camera shoots I remember from yes. you, Sammy and Aileen. I used to call it the three camera shoot because you get the stories from every angle on Instagram well, and you guys did it again. That's like almost the other thing. It's funny because like, I feel like I almost, dr I dress up. I'm like almost I'm more concerned with how I look on these girls trips mm. because I know there's going to be like if, if, if I met Mike and I go away and I don't take any pictures, there will be no pictures taken. Mm. <laughs> um, but on this, there's like a lot of people who are much more active on social media than me. So I'm like, yeah. I feel like I have to look better than I do on a trip with him. Listen, this is <laughs> I, I've been thinking about this a lot. The idea that we're all kind of self-producing now based mm -hmm. on your level of awareness of the cameras on around you and your life. You know, right. it's uh, it's interesting to hear that because it's like. Oh, this is a better look good trip. 
Mm-hmm. This can't be like us disgustings going away and wearing our sweats to the beach. Like I got, there's going to be eyes on me, so to speak. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That, there's going to be photos. Photos yeah. will be taken. And that's stressful. That that can ruin a trip for someone. You know, that can make someone it like, can. you right. know, a, a, live ang- anxiously. I, to bring right, it back not, to not me. Feel, it could feel like not a vacation. Well, I had to go to my brother's wedding. I well, got two suits. I got to wear a suit Friday and I got to wear a tux Saturday. And I, you look great. The whole you. family looked great. Your mom looked great. I mean, the, everyone Ruthie brought obviously it. Obviously, looked incredible. Ruthie looked amazing. But your mom looked really, really good. My yeah. mom looked good. Her mom looked good. My dad looked good. Her dad looked good. Her sisters <laughs> looked good. Everyone looked good. <laughs> well, you go, as you get towards a wedding, and, and I don't wear a suit to work every day, so there's no suit options. There's one. When's the last option. time you wore a suit? <sighs> you know, maybe like when I went. You know back to Boca for like a high holiday, Mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, you know, high holidays are, it's like, you know, there's two times where you start to sweat. It's right before the high holidays. You're like, fuck, I got to fit in that Rosh Hashanah suit. Yeah. And then there's like a wedding or a, a, an event where you're like, okay, it's sitting in the closet. And like, this is just me as a person. I think it's somewhat male skewing is the idea of like, I'll try it on that week. I'll try it on later. I'll try it on later. Like, yeah. I texted Harry. I go, tell Ruthie and her family I haven't tried on my suit yet. I'm not sure if it fits. I And then tape their reaction. Because I just wanted to like see them be like, we've been trying on our dresses every day. <laughs> you, you do. Know? Well, you, there's like multiple fittings. Right. It's a whole thing. And I'm sitting there being like, it'll be fine. And then maybe it's not fine. I wake up right. in the middle of the night. Is it fine? You know, yes. and then... That's I have a why if you had a woman's touch, she'd be like, try this on three weeks ago. Make sure it gets dry clean. No woman's touch at all. So I... Basically, like Wednesday night before going, I'm like pacing in my apartment, looking at the suit and the tux, being like, "Okay, here we go. This better work." They both fit. the The weekend was fantastic. Like, you know, I. It's one of those things. You know, her family's so nice, like so easygoing. Right. My family, annoying, hard to deal with, a lot of opinions. That sounds like a nice balance. <laughs> it's a good balance. Right? Um, yeah, I, I think so. But also, it, the the balance is even better because, you know, um, Fob and Mob and Bob, brother yeah, of the brother. you know all these acronyms. Fog, no, and the Fog. Mo and the Mill. <laughs> right. The, <laughs> well, when in your groom's family, yeah. you your opinions uh, are told. Like, I, I can look at my parents and go, shut the fuck up. You know, well, like people, their yeah, their opinions yeah. aren't really war. You know, they're just along for the ride to have a fun weekend and do their thing. Right. So, like, it's kind of the perfect balance. You want opinionated, annoying groom's family, okay, and you want easygoing bride's, bride's family. family. If it switches, I could see how it go. It's a bad I mix. Mean, my switch, and that was why it was a mix. <laughs> tough, t- tough yeah. sledding. I know. <laughs> so I'm obviously joking a little, but I, over the course of the weekend. I kept thinking of like, man, you you hear bad wedding stories like, you know, left at the altar and, you know, like those are the ones you hear. Um, you hear left at the altar? No, I'm saying like you. you, <laughs> On you love is, besides love is blind? Well, okay. besides, you don't hear them. But like if you were to hear a wedding story, it's right. either it went great or you won't believe what the right. fuck happened. I've heard like I think we've all heard a story <laughs> where like things went very, very wrong. That's the thing. And not to say there's many of those, but those are the ones you hear because that's a more entertaining story. No yeah. one wants to hear a great wedding. Yeah. You know, so which is the story I have to tell here. But I. <laughs> I guess I kept thinking of like, how does that happen? Like, how insane it is. That what? How, that someone could ever like not show up or be a oh. difficult person. Oh my God, or be, be, a, that's what I'm saying. be an asshole or get right. into a fight at a wedding. Like, how do people lose their minds like that? Because the whole weekend went so perfectly, but why well, It sounds like you it? guys are all normal. <laughs> right. <laughs> I that's guess the, so. That's the thing, though. These things happen when there's people who have like personality disorders. Right. Who are all in the same room together. And like years have been, and also like I mean, it sounds like her parents are married, your parents are married. Right, like, yeah, I guess that's you don't an have easier time. a lot of the time when there's these. I don't want to call it like then there's like the, these more of like layers of family dysfunction. I think that's when Mixed you get families those stories, and right, boyfriends you know? and girlfriends right. of people that you know. I I get that. I'm very well, lucky in that sense. Where, I have to say, sorry, go on. No, go go ahead. I was gonna say I feel like an oversharing like. 30% of the emails are about issues with people. Maybe weddings. that's why I was so in tune to like 
man, the oversharing emailers right. are out of their fucking minds. You only minds. hear the drama. Right. I, I'm like, I can't, because it was just such a, a breeze of a weekend. And like, it was beautiful and the food was good. And I gave my speech. So are we going to talk about the speech now or on benefits? We should talk about it on benefits. Um, but I, I'm not sure. Should I release it? I don't know. Should I put it out there? The speech, the, the, the recap? message, oh, the, the best speech. man speech. Do you have it? I so they had like a videographer. Like I'm sure it's yeah. Maybe out there. we should put that on the benefits. Episode. Maybe we should. I I, I want to hear it. I enjoyed telling the speech, but it's funny. Like I do the speech, like I do my stand up. It's like I'm a, I'm a talker. I'm not a writer. I'm like, mm. let me figure out this. I got like, you know, and I give. I mean, me I a, saw people posting you that the speech was great, which usually you don't get. I never see anyone posting about a speech. Really, well, I guess. You don't usually have a professional comedian giving a best right. man speech, so you're kind of like a fiance were performing. Well, you would that, get a picture. You would get something. Oh, look how you know <laughs> she's killing. Of course, you know. But I don't know. I thought it was okay. I thought I don't think it was like I'm not like sitting right. here patting. I thought I got I got it done, and and that right. was a kind of a it was a stress on me to tell you the truth. But you were saying that you told me yesterday that you feel you felt like there was like you needed like a. A vacation from the, the oh, thing, I, which I, was, I totally get. Yeah, because it's like at a wedding, you kind of already feel like you have to speak, but people like know who you are, right? So you have to like you have I they have to, to leave with a good impression of you. You're not like and and you're the brother of the groom, so it's not even like you're a regular guest. But I feel like I'm sure you had to work like at my wedding because people were probably right. like knowing who you are, wanting like you, you know you're giving them an impression of you, <laughs> not just as like Harry's brother. Right, but, oh, but also like, oh, this, that's a guy maybe I follow or have right. heard of, or oh, he's the comedian. Let's see how let's see how good or nice he is, you know. And like, for the whole weekend, though, it's not it, just it was, like a five social, minute interaction. My social battery was at a zero mm -hmm. by the last day. Like I was like, enough already. I I went to the airport three hours early. I was like, I am gonna get away <laughs> from all of these fucking people because you're right. Here's the thing: when you're the brother of the groom, you're expected, you know. Groom and bride and groom, their social battery, I'm sure, is drained too. But they know everyone there. Right. So they invited everyone. So they know that person's name and that person's name. And they, they oh, so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. I get people coming up to me and going, Jared. And I got to be like, oh, right. okay. Uh, I got to remember in half a second who this person is. And live up to their is. expectations of you. Right. And, and some people are really good about it. They're like, I'm so-and-so. We met four months ago. Good that's to meet you. That's how you do it. They must listen to the show. Right. That's how you <laughs> act like a human. And then there's other people who are like, you don't remember me, do you? And it's like, uh, uh, go fuck yourself. Right. <laughs> you know, like you want to like fucking kill that person. Yes. Unless you've had like a child with someone, it's inappropriate to say, <laughs> you don't remember me, do you? <laughs> if you are that person, this is your, this is your intervention. If you go up to people and go, you don't I remember, remember me, me, do you? You're the problem. Right. You stink. It's okay to say, I'm not sure if you remember me. Different. This different. is who I am. That, that, that's, that's empathetic. Okay. Yes. That's not accusatory. I'm not sure if you remember. Yeah. Hey, That's fine. I do it all the time. Same. I'm sure you don't remember. I'm Jared. You met me this at this yes. and this. And then it's like, boom. That's yes. why we're good people. Exactly. Not like these animals. So the wedding was perfect, beautiful, nice. I mean, like, you can't. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. Like, uh, nobody was. It didn't feel like anyone was out of hand. Um, it just was like. Uh, it Went was well. easy, like you know, like it, well, it makes you good it, band. There was a couple like. good band, but also like it's funny because my brother's younger than me, and then you see him like going to the next phase of life. And we had like the wedding weekend ended, and I, you know, it is funny to see look in the eyes of a man who's leaving you. Oh, you felt like he was leaving you behind. Not behind, but I do understand why people get married quicker when they have a family member who's already been married or feel the pressure of it or a friend or, a, you know, when all your, you know, societally, it's like right. we wear pants because everyone wears pants. You know, like when everyone goes and gets married and you're alone, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it is interesting that people would maybe be more geared towards that. So it's like if you're out there dating and you meet someone where the whole crew is like pumping their fists and going out and getting tail. Yeah. It's Especially for not, men. For I men. Think. I'm yeah. saying it's not right, on their yeah. mind. Right. I, even as the, well, when I watched him walk down the aisle, I was like, I could see why this would be tough, maybe tougher for a woman. Mm -hmm. 
at your because I had a lot again I mean, we, we have talked a female about audience the, and I've talked I've told you about like the young, younger sister older sister trope of right of getting married right yeah. and I don't feel that right but I did feel the idea that like He's leaving kid world and going into adult world. And I don't well, know if that happens on the other side. Like, I was like, well, good luck with, like, real shit now. Like, well, <laughs> like I, 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 I could empathize, but I couldn't understand. I go, I don't know. I could see that. Well, you have a joke, um, not to give away your jokes, on please. your new special about going away with your brother and your parents on vacation. Right. The whole special is about my family vacation right. together still when I'm 39. Bit. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. So, um, again, so so much that I saw it more than once. Um, I'll probably see it a third time. If um, the tickets are free. No, I will pay <laughs> for the next, Jordana the next set I'm paying. I know. No, um, so... <laughs> But anyway, you have a whole set about like a thing about that. And is is it kind of like, all right, like he's now in a different family, like he's in his yes. own family. And yeah. like, is that I think I, he felt that way a little right. bit. I think that's the scary part. I don't know if that's male, female, what, what gendered at all. But it's I think a lot about this podcast and when people write in and they say, you know, they had no reason they were sideswiped, you know, like right. the reasons in a breakup. And I'm like. I can't believe you can't understand, <laughs> you know, like I, you know, even my, in why my own life, scary, you mean? why it's scary. Why? Like, did it you know, make you want it a little more or like envision it a little more? It maybe? made me envision it more. Okay. Absolutely. You know, my family, we were new to the whole game, you know, like nobody there mm -hmm. was married except right. my parents and her parents. It must've been very excited. Exciting. It's exciting, but you're like, what's this going to bring? You know, like, I, I know. How were your parents at the wedding? Were they were, it sounds like they, they were, were hilarious. Great. Yeah. They were like, you know, they were like dogs without leashes. They just roamed around and so asked questions. Your mom questions. got a lot of pictures. My mom taking pictures when there's a photographer there. My dad, I was like, hey, you got to be there at 1 He's like, what do we got to be there so early? I go, we ask you to do oh, he's one that guy. thing. He's you that can't <laughs> just follow directions. But You're, why? Why? And yeah. I don't know why. I'm yeah. doing everything so I don't get yelled at later. That's the only reason I do things generally. Right. Is to not get in trouble. So why don't you just fall in line? Was there a mother-son dance? Yes. Nice. My mom. So my mom, we can't play it, the song. Uh, but my mom... <laughs> thought it was hilarious to do the mother son dance to this one song and i'd never heard it before and it's what's it called it's called i'll always love my mama <laughs> <laughs> and it's this upbeat oh, it's right. like she's the really crane. marking her territory uh, no and it says she's the uh, go to the, we got the lyrics I'll always I've never love heard, my you heard this mama song, she's the no. only one like it, it, it what is that <laughs> no one else go? <laughs> It's very like that. Go, oh, okay. Candace, let's hear it. I'm not going to sing it, but I'll read it. Read I'll, it. I'll always love my mama. She's my favorite girl. She's my favorite girl. Yeah. Okay. I'll always love my mama. She brought me into this world. And then there's like a refrain that goes, you only have one. <laughs> Okay, uh, I like it. Your mom is. Uh, she you know, went off. She's the, marking her territory. Totally peed all over Harry. Yeah. And then. Um, yeah, so that's the wedding recap. That's I mean, funny. there's uh, it was great, wonderful. I hope I didn't say anything wrong. Here, let me. We have another recap to do. How was the cocktail hour? Sorry. Great. Yeah. Round bar, circular bar. Love so it. So never. Oh, uh, easy to get a easy drink. Easy to get a drink. Um, How was it lit up? Lit. Up. <laughs> <laughs> lit up. Nice. nice. There yeah, you could see. Yeah. Okay. Some weddings Killing they don't. It. Some weddings <laughs> they they do a blind cocktail hour where people. Oh. Well, it's very funny. So my so the wedding there was a wedding at the hotel from um where my friends and I were yeah. in Cancun. But now that we're 35, we were bitching the entire time <laughs> um about like the noise level. We, you were the ones we complaining were, about we the noise at a wedding. We were complaining about the noise. <laughs> and then the next day, um I like look on social media at their at their Instagram and I but my you found my, them. My wedding planner did this wedding. Really? So I was like, all right, she's not great with noise control and she's not great with <laughs> cocktail hour lighting. <laughs> Otherwise, she was wonderful. Otherwise, so killed it. Very That's funny. so funny. I have a very, I have an off air, very funny story for you. Can't after wait. About that. Well, to bring on air stories on, the last week we asked people who loves balls? Yes. <laughs> we said it like that. Make right? that my phone ring. 
How or many Hank balls? Who loves balls? Who's a ball queen? And then I, we had both forgotten that this was something we talked about. So if you're not sh- remembering, yes, we just were we like forget- wondering, like who's a what woman is like into balls? Well, what was, the question was um, something about balls. We brought up like fetishes, the, right? It was how to compliment a man, and that first email ended with you asking Jared what compliment he would like, and that's when he brought up being having a strong medium D. And yes, it right. would be great if somebody complimented your balls. And it I would said, be "Are nice. women and into you balls? Said balls aren't like that sexual of a thing for women." And the people in our email disagree with me. Disagree. The listeners were talking. I guess I shouldn't generalize. To well, all women. I shouldn't either. I I just never had. I've had people play with my balls. They're suck fine. My balls. I'm not like against them. It's just not. I fine. love having my balls sucked. I am a proud ball queen. Is the title of this email? Okay. J&J, as a benefit subscriber, I'm writing to you on this Tuesday afternoon to proudly declare that I am a ball queen you seek. I'm the ball queen. <laughs> I'm the ball I queen like, you we, seek. I was like, did we do a basketball segment? I don't remember. <laughs> right. Before you even asked for listener submissions, I knew I'd write in when I heard Jordana say balls aren't doing much for you sexually because I vehemently disagree. Okay. Why aren't zero, you in the YouTube comments? This I'm, is fun. I'm zero for two with the tuna right. and the, the balls. The tuna really just, makes I people really, mad. Okay. Uh, I, I am constantly raving to all the girls. This is She's a ball wow. queen PR that, agent. Okay. And the girls and gays that I find balls to be so much more interesting than the penis shaft. Well, it's a good point. Okay. Interesting. It has, you know, divots and crevasses and nooks and Why crannies. Why more interesting? Well, the shaft is the shaft. Right. It's the main event, though. It's the event. It's, I mean, it's the cocktail hour leading to the main event. Right. But, okay, the, the penis is for you. The balls are for him. I'm willing to let her right, have her it. way with sorry. balls. Sorry. I, I, I don't no, want to no, hear you. I don't want to ball shame. Let's just, say, okay. My current boyfriend has the most beautiful set of balls I've ever seen. <laughs> okay. She, I wrote it wrong. The most beautiful balls I've ever experienced. 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 What they're does she big. do with them for her? Well, they're big. She goes on to explain. Okay. They're big and they hang low, which I attribute to his being tall and slim. As I've drawn that comparison with past partners, when he is turned on, they're slightly enlarged and extra saggy. And I love to feel them right after he comes when they're extra sensitive and have that shriveled up uh, have shriveled up a little visualizing that they've just released all of his cum is that where cum comes from None the balls? Of what you just said sounds a bit <laughs> <laughs> extra saggy <laughs> extra saggy i gotta admit i was ready to have my balls played with after reading this. i'm okay. into this i'm, I'm like right. and i kind of do understand the idea of like i've drained these balls even if cum doesn't come from the balls okay i don't know you would know better than me Considering your mom's Drain a gynecologist, I, I don't I mean, know. I guess I, I didn't think about it as like a as that, where but I guess it made? makes sense. That's where they that's where it comes out. Yeah, I don't think a penis is like a super soaker, where the balls are the tank with which the. We are so uninformed. This is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Candace is like, really? don't. She's like, you were you were making all of America dumber. She- <laughs> This is the dumbest section we've ever done. I mean, I'm thanking this person for Sorry. It. They write they continue to write, We're going through a rough transition right now, but that's an email for the oversharing podcast. Okay. She might lose those balls. Uh and I can't shake the feeling that Stay if we Stay together don't, for the balls. <laughs> well, she says I can't feel shake the feeling that if we don't work out, the uh the thing I will miss most about having sex with him are his gorgeous, perfect balls. Cheers and thanks for everything. The ball queen she must be I mean, maybe i'm wrong maybe more people lean towards her than lean towards me hey uh, to me the whole thing is an amusement park mm-hmm. go on all the rides i'm not against them i'm you know right just, I, like i don't I you're not sexually turned on by no them. yeah like so i'm saying they could like they could if someone had an issue where they had to have one removed it wouldn't bother me at all well they ask you if you want to like get a prosthetic Right, which to me I wouldn't think was necessary. Well, what if you? I, I would be afraid I'd fall over to the right because I'm uneven. <laughs> it's a 
symmetry thing. That's a symmetry, right. I, yeah. I think, well, ne- I'm not speaking out of turn. Nimesh Patel, who is a friend of mine and also yeah. a guest on this podcast. Oh, I think he's he's mentioned this. He yeah. has a whole special about mm-hmm. ha- having his ball removed. Yeah. So you should all go watch it on YouTube. It's there for free. It's not a secret. Not a secret. Um, but he talks about the prosthetic. And I don't know if he got one. I'll have to feel later today. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm in a mood. I'm sorry. I, no, it's, I, I'm, I'm in a mood wedding. too. Yeah, yeah listen. Let, <laughs> let's we, get in. Let's this do is it. A curly hair episode of the UL yeah, podcast. That's how you know. Let I'm, your feeling, hair out. I'm feeling wild and free. I love it. Um, I'm on the road. If you're out there um, and just scream out your window, hey, Boise, please buy a ticket. Boise, Idaho, uh, Capitol Theater in Olympia, Washington. Vancouver, I was there, Love had it. amazing shows. I want you to come back, buy those tickies. Uh, if when you know are you in anyone, Vancouver? This weekend. Oh, wow. You should go to Whistler. There's a chance. You're not going. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I kinda, Maybe. It's in mind. Do you um, ski? No. I've skied. Right, we discussed we've just, this. We've, we've talked discussed about this. this. I, <laughs> I don't like to tell people. I Sorry. Uh, Comedy <laughs> Works in Denver, that's almost sold out. Uh, San Francisco's almost sold out. Uh, McKee's Rocks, Pennsylvania, Columbus, L.A. I'm doing the Netflix is a Joke Festival. It's important to me to do well, have that show sell out. So I, I if you're out there and you maybe sort of might buy a ticket, I would love for you to get one. Uh, New Orleans, Dallas, Nashville, West Hampton Beach, going to the Hamptons. Love it. Love it. July 4th weekend, so make a trip. Uh, do you have Brookfield a hotel? Was, I do. You reminded me of this. I got to get that hotel. Uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm also adding Cleveland. I'm I'm adding Tarrytown. I'm adding, there's a New Jersey show. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing an Atlantic City show. Westchester. That's right. Um, So they're also all coming to my calendar. JaredFreed.com. (laughs) JaredFreed.com. What are we talking about today? I I We have some really good emails this week, I think. We do. Candace strikes again. Crushing it. Um, today we're talking about the dating apps. The apps. The, the old I apps. I haven't been When's on the last them? time you were on the apps? Summer. Summer. Yeah, it's been, it's a, been a long bit. time. I'm 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 done. I I, I don't think uh, that's the the forum for me. Right. I mean, you but, are also out and about and like I would say like just because they're not for you doesn't mean they're not for the listeners. No, 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 no. I I I He's I much think... cooler than you. He meets a lot more people. Um. <laughs> I'm a more active. I'm a man about town, you know. Um, no, you are, and I think I, that like um there's no reason for you to be on the It app. wasn't healthy for me. It was taking up time and space, but I do think that has to do with this email. Mm-hmm. Because I think the apps are a piece of the pie and you also have to like Admit to what they are or what they've become. Right. Because over time, you know, this podcast is not about changing dating. It's about commiserating about dating, understanding what's going on. Well, it's raining mm-hmm. out. We're giving you the jacket to wear. Right. We're about um, dealing with the with, with the thing in front of you. Right. Not right. wishing it were a different way as or you, talking shit about it. As you said, a better buyer. Because yes. I think... When these things aren't said and when someone in the room goes, that's dumb, stupid. You know, people yell you down as a single person. Mm-hmm. You know, they they want you to shut the fuck up and just get married already. Why do you, why do you think you're going to find someone more perfect than I found? Right. Start being miserable just like <laughs> fucking me. Get with the program. Right. <laughs> what? You think you're special? Now? You think, yeah, you think you deserve yeah. a love story that that's is any thing. different than. When someone picks someone and it feels and, and, or someone won't, when someone won't pick someone, mm-hmm. it sometimes feels like, are you saying, like, like, what makes you so special that you think who you're going to find you? the perfect person? Right. I didn't. Who, <laughs> who do you think you are? Yes. But I do think that's why the honeymoon phase, you talked about on oversharing, the yeah. honeymoon phase. And how you like, you know, it, it was important to the relationship because it, it, it's got to start there. You need or where, it. Yeah. Where is this going to go? And what like, will you remember? <laughs> right. So you want to read the email? Yeah. We want to. Let's do it. All right. Hi, hey, Jordana and Jared. I have finally re entered the dating pool after leaving a six year <clears throat> abusive relationship a year ago I'm sorry. and a lot of therapy. The last time I was single and dating, I was 21, and now I'm 28. I've been using the apps for the first time in my life and honestly don't know if Seattle is full of creeps or is this or if this is the way dating apps are everywhere. 
Every guy that I match with messages me explicit and aggressive, non-consensual sexual messages. Uh, personally, I love consensual sexting and sex in general, but that's irrelevant. From the get-go, regardless of what they say in their profile, most say looking for a long-term relationship or life partner. I roll. <laughs> for example, giving me detailed descriptions of how horny I make them, asking if I'm freaky because I'm a red, I'm a redhead, describing sexual acts they want to do to me, telling me I'm a redhead. <laughs> You thing? got red hair, so that means you fuck, right? Is that a thing? I don't know. Anything could be a thing. Describing sexual acts they want to do to me, telling me about their girthy cock, etc. That is an aggressive opening line. In, within the first few messages on the app, I'll say... Girthy cock. I'm no prude, <laughs> but that phrase... That would scare me. Girthy, I would jump back from Girthy? That. Yeah, girthy. I used to do a joke way when I first started about... And I'd say girthy penis, girthy. I use the word specifically. It jars people. And girth is a uh, not to be taken lightly. And not to be used with penis unless yeah. you're. It's a warning. My friend, <laughs> my friends seem appalled by the things I'm sent, but most are in serious relationships and haven't dated new people in years. It feels impossible to use the apps without feeling like a piece of meat at the auction, and I just don't even know how to navigate. Am I wrong for being weirded out by this? Is this pretty normal to have no viable options to actually date? Should I just move cities? Thanks for your help. A betch back in the game. So it's, this is I, I love this email. Yeah. It, well, it's it's funny because, you know, we we I think we, I've heard a lot of feedback from I don't know if it was last week or the week before the email where the per, um, the person's se starts sexting the girl he had coffee with. Right. And then. I you know we I speculated that maybe it was like he was pretending that it was an accident, right? Um, and then Candace was saying that like that's actually like a thing that people say it's an accident and it's a way, and, uh, look, they, right? They, you've so you've they gotten start, that before. You've said so they right? start sexting. They say, "Ooh, my bad, that was meant for someone else," and it's really a way of them testing whether you'd be into sexting or not. Yeah, it's like just like the dumb thing of like, "Oh, sorry, my cousin had my phone or something when you were in like high school right. and somebody sent you right. a weird text." But like with this, it's like. Yeah, most of my experiences on the dating apps were like, as soon as you gave a guy your number, as you soon got as you very gave your... weird messages very right. quickly. There's no shift into it. There's no working up into getting sexual. It was just, so oh, there's a dick. Right. Was there like a certain kind of die guy that like would do that more? Um, no, that's the worst part. They look normal yeah, they and look they like seem normal. Guys. They seem cute. The conversations are nice on the apps. That's where I'd be very guarded with who I gave my number to. Right. right. And then you give your number out, and that is why I would only last like a week and then try again next year. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, Goodbye, I mean, apps. See you next year. Yeah. That sounds horrific. Listen, can I just tell yeah. everyone, let's stop acting surprised. I, that <laughs> I am here to be, and I, my job on this show a lot of times is to take Have you, you ever done this? You're 10% you're away from all men. Have you ever done this? This isn't my game. Okay. Okay. <laughs> It's not your strategy. This is not my move, but I am I am 10% away. I know where this comes from. Okay. So that's why I am 10% away. I'm here to like, I'm gonna put on the mask of the murderer. I'm gonna I'm gonna say, let me apologize first. I'm sorry this is for happening. For your whole gender. This is for my whole gender. Okay. Okay. And it's funny, she writes so many things in here that I wanna like address. Okay. You know, one, the general tone of like, is this what it's like out there? <laughs> Stop it. Is it Seattle? Stop it. It's everywhere. Okay. It was your dad. It was your uncle. I sometimes. But it wasn't I, you. That's what I'm saying. But, but it's within all of them. Okay. Sometimes I feel like I'm the joker. And I'm like the, the 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 villain in the movie who speaks to the Batman, and he's like, "You think you're better than me? This is who you are too." <laughs> like I feel like I feel like such a piece of shit okay. because I'm not surprised by this. I would not do this. This is not my game. I would hope I wouldn't do this. If if someone rose their hand a month from now, I was like, "I have a text where he tried." To... I don't think that's out there right. in my. But I'm also never gonna speak. <laughs> 100% <laughs> on any of this shit. Unlikely. Um, unlikely. I would say if someone is looking to... It, it, this, There's like a positive way to look at this. <laughs> These guys think you're very attractive. <laughs> that and their penis is texting, not their minds. Because 
they're telling you exactly what they want right away. And they're trying to eliminate risk of date that doesn't end with sexual content. Does this work? That's the thing. You said that about how many times has that been said about cat callers? Right. And it just takes one. One woman who goes girthy cock. Ooh, I've been, you know, and and it's a little bit and and, and they're playing towards the idea of like there's someone on here who's going through quote unquote their hoe phase that mm. that is here for this specific good time. And it's funny, I talked with some friends before this. About this email? About this email, specifically. Okay. Experiencing everything that Candace is, uh, not Siri, I talked to you. <laughs> She's on like, my, girthy cock. Like, my Siri. <laughs> I don't know where that is. A girthy cock, <laughs> cock clean, queen. <laughs> I couldn't even say it. Say that seven times fast. Ball queen. Ball queen, girthy cock queen, girthy cock queen, girthy cock queen, girthy cock. That's hard. There we go. Should teach okay. him. <laughs> you should teach. Uh, what's, what's me, 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 speech me, me. Thera- right. Speech therapy. Oh. Speech pathologist over here. That's me. Yeah. Um, is that all it takes? Is that what gets you the doctorate? Candace is like, I don't want to have to screen the DMs for everyone screaming at you. Please stop. I love speech pathologists. I love them. You get hours like a teacher and you get to tell everyone you're a hero. Uh, so He's doubling down. He's doubling down. Summer's off. That's always the number. Okay. I was talking to my friends about this email. Just because I was like. And it, it is interesting because it's like, it's when this comes up that is the most annoying. And I do understand. Let me empathize with the emailer and people who are frustrated by this. Because you do, at a minimum, when you match with someone, and I think women do this more than men, you do the the masturbation. The, uh, emotional masturbation. An emotional masturbation. You see it. You go, yeah. checking boxes. You're thinking. He's cute. I've been to that neighborhood. Exactly. Went to a nice school. It is not deep to you. It is way deeper than this girthy cock guy. So you're thinking okay. not that deep into him, and you're thinking, oh, he must be thinking not that deep into me. He's thinking even more shallow than you. So mm-hmm. to him. He's physically shallow. Physically. So you, on the app, you go, I'm, I can understand. You match with someone, you go, oh, look it. He's cute. Cute. Yeah. Right. That's the voice. He's cute. He's cute. Yeah. Got a job. Look at friends. <laughs> looking for long term relationships. She even referenced what he's looking for in a relationship. Right. Like, like that gives, like that's, that's how I can tell. That's what we're looking for in these profiles. Right. Okay. Right, let yeah. me start the conversation. Then he comes in and he's like, touch this girthy cock. And it's, you're like, <laughs> Fuck, how did I even, like, I would understand where you're exhausted. I do get that. Aren't you like, oh, there's, like, other places where you could do this? Aren't there? Couldn't there be? No. Not as easy as this. Not without repercussion. Like, and and again, we're only explaining one version of it. There's another version where you're talking to, you know, to leave it to Beaver on the app. And as Candace says, hey, let's exchange numbers. We'd love to go out next week. And then all of a sudden you get the number and it's the Fonz. And he's like, how about this girthy cock? And you're like, where did this person come from? That's what right. Candace is referencing. Yeah. The minute the numbers get exchanged and now you feel even worse and more exhausted. At least now you're wishing he was girthy cock on the app. Right. That's how The great... earlier you can be girthy cock, the better. Right. Title of the episode. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, so I under, like, this is me saying, an empathetic, like, yes, this sucks. Mm-hmm. And the, you know, the people that I spoke to before about this email, they were like, I, they all said the same thing. I'm sexual too. And I, and it's not the same thing. Not the same thing. Right. Agreed. And it's like, they're like, well, you take me for a drink. Maybe it goes in that direction. Like, okay. this is how disgusting the people on the other side are you're dealing with. This guy, if you wrote back, if he was like, hey, how about this girthy cock? And you were like, meet me in an alley full of heroin needles and will lie down and fuck, he'd go, I'll be there in 10. That's where he's at. So what well, is there? No, is there no thought in any, are they so animalistic that there's no thought that maybe the person on the other end of this phone is, is not interested in that is going to be, they don't turned care. off by they're, that. They're saying be, this is a why make net, them uncomfortable. Why that's the pro you know, that this person's obviously uncomfortable. I don't blame them for being right. uncomfortable. I'd be uncomfortable. I do think, um, well, you feel like, disp- you feel like cheap, I think too, when you get those. Th- and obviously these people are looking for a cheap time. They don't even want to go on the date and have a drink with you That's before saying, saying girthy cock. 
Yeah. So, but, like, I, but I, I agree it's not about the person they're texting, but it's like, are you such an animal that you have, like, it's like, imagine going out with someone and they just start, like, peeing in the middle of the street. It's Listen. like, do you have any sense of, like, of like social But this is norms? where I've, I've referenced this a lot, the aunt theory. Mm -hmm. The people act wildly when they think they're acting alone with no consequence. And if you have an aunt, you know, you're just a different person when you meet through someone else than you meet through an app. The app has allowed this anonymity. And that's why, like, the dating the same guy Facebook groups, I was we've never been on board with those. No. I'd be more on board with this guy wrote to me about his girthy cock. Yeah, I could I could get behind like, that. Like a Facebook, yeah. hey, if it just stopped at that, like but here's with the, the message in the in the would screenshot. You, would you even need to be warned? It would be by the time you messaged with them, they would you would have already gotten it. That's right. That's like, the problem. What prob are you gonna do? Right. This is the problem. That's why like this idea of like being shocked and like, is it just Seattle? Is it just and it's like I don't know. I would guess like Mike has never done that. I would too. I would well, this is the other thing. Like, this is this is like uh, no well, whammy, like, no whammy, no whammy. You well, know, so like, even if they've thought about it, doesn't mean all men would do it. Right, but that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm like, I don't, I'm not shocked mm -hmm. as a man. That's why I'm saying I'm 10% away. I'm not sitting here telling you I'm a hero. Right. I'm sitting here telling you, I know why they're doing it. I know the idea that it's only in Seattle. Stop Crazy. it. Yeah. The idea, it's because you're on a dating app where there's no consequence. It's right. either you unmatch me or you touch my girthy cock. <laughs> <laughs> I, either well, of those options is okay, I guess. To, to, to that guy. Yeah. and But I, I would say the other thing is like, I you know, this is, here's. But like there is a sense of like you wouldn't go up and spin in someone's face just because you'd never see them again. No, but that's not how these people see it online. I, I, we, to say that people online right. act differently in person, yeah, we've I mean, said it. Right. You know, look, you know, people comment on things, I, and I, that's you want sure you comment on a. You see people comment on a Facebook post, something they would never say to someone's face. Never. Right. There's no consequence. You don't feel it the same. You also think they know my tone. Right. And here's the other thing it's about just a little the, girthy cock. Just a girthy cock. Uh, so oh, what? okay, okay. Well, now we'll move on. We'll, we'll talk about politics. You know, like, <laughs> well, that that is that's the other thing is like. The, I think would my advice to everyone, yeah. If I'm to like, girthy cock does not become let's go for drinks. Yeah, I would say immediate. Don't give that person a shot. If they're going sexual before you've even met, they are making sure, and this is in all cases, they are making sure that someone is down for sexual before even getting there. And I would say, at my most empathetic, at my most positive look at these people, they're just they they're thinking the same way as you of like, oh, if it goes that way, it goes that way. I just want to, but they're going, they're so not trusting that they'll have a fun time or it could be a long-term relationship that they're not even willing to do the first step of meeting in person and letting it go that way. Right. And every woman that you talk to where they go, I'm sexual, I would be down for that. That could happen to me. You go, but not yeah, this but way. not this way. Yeah. You wouldn't want it to happen to you in the way that feels good and right and fun and flirty and yeah. had the mystery. Yeah, it's less that, cheap. I don't think a lot of men that do this, are they're not up for the mystery. Right. They want guarantees. And I, I, it sucks because, but I just think she needs to like, I, if I were to give her advice, like this exists, I could understand that once you've exchanged numbers, it's so annoying that like suddenly this new human is texting you. Right. These disgusting things. And, and maybe even if they go soft on it, it's good. Like even that guy, oh my, you know, like, like I've just been feeling a certain type of way right. about you. It's like, we've never you, even, even met. like, can you send me pictures? I that, think is the same low same, level, the same low level so, sort of more socially acceptable way to do that. You ask for pictures before the date to see if they send pictures at all. Right. You start with pictures and then it goes towards pictures. It almost makes you wonder how men are functioning normally in society day to day when they have all these like thoughts. Not, like how are I'm like, do you guys have a job? Do you have a job that you like go to like every day? <laughs> While you're texting people this shit? Like, Listen, that's how high, you know, uh, achieving some of these men are. They're dealing with these <laughs> thoughts and doing well at their jobs. It's right, crazy. It's just funny. You just, like, walk into an office after the girthy, like, after sending that to a complete stranger who's giving you no indication that they are interested in that. Right. And this is why this story at brunch, if there's men at the brunch, it doesn't really hit them as hard. 
Right. You know, she wrote in, do I have to navigate? How do I navigate? And it's just like, mm, not a big deal. Just right. throw them away. Well, there was a time. I mean, again, I am never saying that there's a time to be dating this better than a different time. But there was a time when you couldn't really do that. No, I mean, maybe we, but you couldn't meet of, anybody anonymously. Of, no, totally. I'm saying that that's there's no, but like there's no, uh, in 1950, you just like wouldn't know that men or mm-hmm. men or you wouldn't be face to face with the fact that. Right. There's that's why a I don't, ton of men who were just like, that's their, like. That's why I kind of, I always eye roll the, my dad is a hero. Right. Yeah, well, he didn't have the tools to be a fucking creep. It's from a different generation. Right. Yeah. I, I don't buy it. You know, not everyone's a Jorge. <laughs> no, I, I, just, I assume Jorge has never sent a message like that. I, I, I would say I would it's imagine. Uh, I would say this a guarantee. Slim and none. Guarantee. But Jorge, you understand the, the where they're. I, I I don't agree with it. I just know what they're trying to do. I guess, but yeah. To like, me, it's I think such a cat collar is crazy too. Right, right. But right. I don't. The cat collar, it only has to work once a year. That seems like a lot <laughs> of effort to put in for once a year. I agree, but if that's all you're looking for. Or like a lot of people to like make uncomfortable for once a year. Right. I don't think they think of it that way. And I think the internet is what softens feeling uncomfortable. You don't even hear back. They should put that on like a job application. And part of me thinks too that part of it is kind of making the other person uncomfortable. Like it's this weird kind of power dynamic. Right. That they kind of get off a little bit on Hmm. like pushing a boundary that other people have. In a way yeah. that well, just feels deeply, deep, deeply like sick to me. <laughs> it's right. fucked up, and that's what the internet is kind of male, allows. Is that the male version of a risky text? <laughs> <laughs> that is the risky. Like for a woman, like the risky text is like, I really like you. Right. This is right. <laughs> the male risky text is, what do you think of girthy Cox? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the word gir- girthy? <laughs> you talking about my brain? No. <laughs> talking about no. my brains. For the ball queens. I get it now. (laughs) All right, let's do an awkward encounter. Let's do it. This is more question than encounter. It's true, yeah. I'm a subscriber to you up on YouTube and an avid listener of your podcast for the past three years. I found great value in your unbiased uh, advice on dating. I recommend it to all my single girlfriends. Keep up the fantastic work. Recently, I found myself navigating the dating scene after ending a serious relationship last November. Taking time for myself, I moved to a new part of town that I had always dreamt of living in. After four months of self-discovery and exploring, I felt ready to dip my toes back into the dating pool. However, I was up for a promotion at work, prompting me to take a a brief hiatus from dating apps. So are we just back where we just started? <laughs> it's all so, the same person all writing say, 16 right. emails. All to say, that was a very Car- Carrie Bradshaw way of writing, I'm not on yeah. the dating apps. Okay. <laughs> on this hiatus, I matched with a seemingly... Well, how'd you match? I matched with a seemingly great guy. Our conversation was instant, leading to an amazing first date. We shared laughter, engaging conversation, and a memorable first kiss that left me butterflies. On our second date, things took a steamy turn, prompting me to express that I wasn't ready for intimacy just yet. A boundary he respected. After a few days, he started acting a little bit snappy. Girthy cock needs some action. (laughs) (laughs) Hey! (laughs) <laughs> snappy is just such a funny description of someone. Snappy. I always, I mean, I've called Mike that before. Being a, Being a little snappy. snappy. Yeah. Do you think it's a male? No, that's a, everyone gets snappy. Yeah, everyone gets, I've gotten snappy. I'm, <laughs> I just, just, I'm the only one who uses, I use that word on him. He doesn't use it on me. Right. Yeah. Start World War III. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I just like the idea of like her being like, can you pass the tea? What? S- suck the scurvy cock. <laughs> Like to be snappy about how you haven't gotten off is so funny to me. Like, well, she's not saying it's def- it's probably because of that. Right, he's just saying he's starting to act snappy. <laughs> a boundary he respected. After a few days, he started acting snappy. He's dealing with some minor family issues, so I don't think anything of it. Uh, on our third date, a mishap occurred uh, following a long day at a glamming conference. What does that mean? Anyone? Like for glamour. Like she's I a guess. makeup artist. She's in makeup. Oh. I mistake. What's that? Right. I mistakenly combined an energy drink with allergy medication, resulting in an unintended effects similar to being high. 
Dur- during the date, I acted out of character, asking repetitive questions, saying random comments, and feeling strange in my own body. At one point in the night, he got visibly annoyed at my comment of being ready to have sex. I clarified, though, that I didn't want it to be that night. <laughs> okay. I'd be a little annoyed. Uh, I can see that. Okay, I, uh, okay. he's already yeah. snappy. You guys, in coming months, dangling. I could be ready for sex. Not now, though. Not now. Right. <laughs> One day <laughs> when we're he's, married. But what do I do with this girthy <laughs> cock? I already pulled it out. No, he's getting snappy. Right, I'd be snappy. I don't know, snappy. I don't know. Saying random comments and feeling strange in my own body. At one point in the night, he got visibly annoyed at my comment of being ready to have sex. I clarified, though, that I didn't want it to be that night. Despite my explanation and apology afterward, he still seemed annoyed. The next day, after explaining what happened, he just stayed in a bothered state and didn't ask any further questions. Not even to check in if I was okay. I have to add that I didn't offend him, at least not intentionally, or said mean things. Since then, his communication has been sporadic and leaving me on red. His reaction to a one-off situation has left me questioning how he would handle future challenges or stepbacks. Does he have a right to be so upset at something he, that was accidental? Is this an indicator of avoidant attachment? The perfect woman doesn't exist. For ex- <laughs> she's like trying to do a TED talk. <laughs> right. Listen here, Robert. <laughs> you think the perfect woman's out there? No, she's not. You're gonna get me, Linda. Yeah, I want to fuck you. <laughs> and then we'll tonight. decide on another unnamed night. So don't be snappy with me. <laughs> <laughs> and just remember, there's no one perfect out there. <laughs> that was the funniest part. <laughs> For context, he's 43. Never married, no kids. I'm 29. Never married, no kids yet. Sincerely, one strike and you're out. What a sign out. Does he have a right to be okay? Let's let's let's. So her sign out is one strike and you're out. Meaning yeah. she's, she's out. out. Yeah, after she's saying one strike. it seems it seems like he's overreacting. There's a point. Let me just defend. Let me just let's say. Hear it. Let me give his let's hear version. You give his version. Yeah. His version is, I like her. We're having a good time. We haven't fucked yet. <laughs> and then, I make my decision. On whether I would like go for the sex doesn't matter to me that much. Okay. Now I'm realizing it matters to her so much that she's going back and forth with deciding, you know, uh, aside from her excuse, which is valid. I'm not trying to. Well, now she's put it on a pedestal of like, I'm going to be ready soon. It reminds me of someone like talking about losing their virginity with their high school boyfriend. Right. Prom night. It's going to be. It'll be then. And then not tonight. Not tonight. Yes. We'll do it some other time. And it's like. At that point, you have to re-engage with yourself and go, okay, am I up for dating someone that I'm not exclusive with that has made sex, that is that sex is this important to them? Right. And him at 43 is going, this is a lot of work to get to know someone in the way I need to get to know them. Right. So I'm going to back away. And I'm going to back away feeling okay about myself because we didn't have sex yet, which is important to her. Yeah. Not to me. So the... And I could see, like, the extra thing of, like, her... Again, I'm not saying she did anything wrong. It seems like it was an accident. It happens. But also, like, sometimes if if that happens after a second date, if that happened to me with a guy, I might just be like, eh, I'm just kind of, like, over it. Right. Not worth... Again, not like, oh, you're like, this is so fucked up that you did this but just like and eh, this was kind of annoying i was on the fence anyway i'm kind of more out now it's the reason people get mad at disposability in 2024 they go i mean she's even kind of like saying why can't, perp- she's like why can't we make it work it's like you've been on two dates right and he's yeah. going i haven't fucked her yet I, I can find a new one that i get you know i can he is assured that he will find a better match for him Right. He's going to send out a mass girthy talk cock text. I'm sure he'll get a response. <laughs> right. And I, she's going, in her mind, she's like, and even based on her schedule, she's like, this fits for you, mm-hmm. not for him. He's got time and space and energy to go find someone that can get to date two without the quarrels that come with, oh, maybe we'll have sex. Eh. Like, he's like, right. eh, I wasn't, again, as you said, on the fence anyways. Yeah. So, and that's the thing about like the th- I feel like the third date behavior, which is she's saying this was a third date. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think the third date behavior, if you've gone on two dates and you're kind of like, it's fine, is going to, it's not that like the person, it's not like you, the person's being so rude by not giving you like the benefit of the doubt. It's like they weren't fully feeling one. If someone felt super strongly, this thing that happened wouldn't have mattered. Right. They would go, oh, of course. And they would go, they would sign your contract that says sex is a big deal to me. Right. And if he's being snappy. Before right. this even happens. You don't happens. even like him. You're he's trying- being sna- right. Someone's being snappy to you between day two and day three. <laughs> that person's like not that into you. Or if they do, they don't care about like what you think about their moods. Right. Most people control their moods for the first few dates if they're into someone. Right. He's annoyed that he now looks like the bad guy for ending things with her because of sex not being. Right. Like that's all. That's probably what he was getting snappy at. He's like, ah, this is I'm being forced into making my decision earlier than I'd like with sex on the table when that's not a part of my, and that to that guy, I'd be like, get the fuck out. Like you, uh, this isn't a match. Obviously right. if it's that important to her not important to you. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and her importance weighs on you. You should get he's out. He's doing a good, he's doing you a favor. Let's, Did he let's end do it? a little, uh, oh, let's, this, oh, he should have just ended it since she goes, because she does to, to give her some, you know, we've done a lot of shitting on her. Right. She said, since then, his communication has been sporadic and leaving me on red. I do think that's a little immature for a 43-year-old man. He just should, just tell her that you're not interested anymore. He should have texted her before she had the chance to write this email. Yes. I, I'm with you. The idea like, hey, I know I've been weird. Things at work are busy. I don't think I'm ready for a romantic match. Or this isn't the romantic match for me. He could have sent that text easily. Yeah. He's not doing it. And she answers the email herself. His reaction to a one-off situation has left me questioning how he would handle future challenges or setbacks. (laughs) He's not planning on being with you for those. So you're not going to have to worry about it. Right. (laughs) I was going to say, let's role play snappy boyfriend who has a snappy guy who hasn't had sex yet. (laughs) Uh, So what time do you want to meet later? Why won't you touch my balls? (laughs) (laughs) We've all been there. (laughs) Yeah, that's... (laughs) And scene. All right, let's do another email. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Should I date someone now if I think I can make them more attractive later? Interesting. Hi, J and J. Jared saw your show twice, Jared, because I love it so much, and she loves your name so much. You said it twice. Amazing. In Dania Beach, where I was sat next to your parents and got to meet them. And oh, in Charleston, where I got to meet you at Uptown Social. Is this your stalker? Met all the Disney characters. <laughs> this is like... Male listener. Oh, sorry. I Well, it's important. I like that You're you right. thought it was a female listener. Yeah. Based on the title. I'm not sure I understand. Siri, I will not suck your girthy <laughs> cock. How many times? Getting snippy with her. <laughs> right. Siri. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're right. It is a man. I remember this now. We anyway, like this man is contemplating Nashville because he's been wanting to visit and hasn't had a legit reason to drive eight hours. This might be your biggest fan. I love him. Great guy. I was out <laughs> having a drink at a bar one night after work alone just to blow off some steam after a stressful work day when a woman approached me and started talking to me. She told me she saw me sitting here alone and was wondering why a cute guy is sitting here alone having a drink. Feeling flattered, I asked if she'd like to join me. She is not my usual type physically, so I was like, it'll be nice to have the company. (laughs) I don't even need to fuck her. Look at me, a gentleman. I'll talk to you. You disgusting. I talk to to women that I don't want to have sex with immediately. You'll make eye contact with them? What a stand-up guy. This guy is crazy. So after the night ended, we exchanged numbers and went our separate ways. I never planned on contacting her because, because again, she's not my my type physically. What is this, Clay? (laughs) To reiterate, <laughs> she's a disgusting animal. But kind. Kind. <laughs> With a great personality. Yes. That's what he's trying to say. Right. When I got home, I decided to look her up on socials and saw some photos of what she looked like a couple of years ago, and I was completely stunned at how incredibly attractive she was. I mean, wow. <laughs> he goes, I mean, wow. <laughs> Complete- this is the meanest email <laughs> Written with no sense of it being mean that I've ever seen. I get it. Right. Okay. Completely stunning. And from our conversation, I did pick up on that she recently went through a rough patch in her life. (laughs) This guy's now writing her story. (laughs) So fast forward. We've been hanging out because a part of me is hopeful that she can get back to how she looked a couple of years ago. And I live an active lifestyle and really feel I could help. That's crazy. That is like, (laughs) I can promise you she doesn't want to hear that. Yeah. 
She ticks every other box, and I really do enjoy her company, and I love her personality. But the physical is important to me. Am I an asshole for hanging with someone with this hope of them getting back to what they were physically? If not, how do I go about this? Because I don't know if I could get past the physical with her if she doesn't. Thank you guys for this platform and outlet for the wild west of dating. Sincerely, asshole. All right, that's well, his. That's the, he, he called himself that. I didn't the say. asshole. Yeah. He understands. He feels bad yeah. that he's writing this. I don't think he's a monster. I don't think so either. I think it's like these are the normal icky thoughts that mm. have are had. I've had that thought about someone that I've. It's, I feel like it's more socially acceptable for a woman to have this thought maybe than a man. That's the first thing I thought of. I was like, this guy sounds bad. This is a funny email when you like think about it. Right. But but I guess women don't do. I want to change them. Women will see a shirt and be like, that shirt's going to be gone when I'm around. Oh, totally. Right. Like, yeah. like but that's different than, you know, oh, he's going through I'm gonna like, a I'm death gonna in get the him, family. I'm going to get him to lose 20 pounds. Right. And then he'll be good enough for me. Right. <laughs> it's it's a little, um, you don't hear that from women, but you do hear a, you don't a hear version about dra- of this. Right. You don't hear about a drastic change, trying to drastically trying to change someone's appearance. Although I did hear that Taylor Swift gave Travis Kelsey $500,000 to get a new wardrobe. Really? $500,000? <laughs> Where is he shopping? I'm sure whatever the nicest. How about a stylist that does it? Why would she let him go to Bloomingdale's? Right. <laughs> I mean, maybe she gave his team that. I don't know. Well, whatever. what if you saw someone's life that you were going to change? Is that not as, you know, I think, I think a lot of women... Different. Because most people would, given the option, would I guess most people would look better too. I don't know. But I right. I I'm just saying like women do this a lot with men, or you hear about this women with men like I'm, I I this email is like a jumping off point. Mm-hmm. Like I don't think he should date someone who he wants to change physically. Agree. Yeah, I think we both I, definitely agree on that. Right. I I don't think I think it's this not is, fair to the person. And no one wants to believe. No one wants to be pitied. And it sounds a little bit like you pity them. Like, I can fix you. Like, I don't think I want to date someone who's like, I can fix you. But then I started thinking of, like, a lot of women are like, you know, the their, I'll fix their lifestyle. I'm not attracted to you, though, is different than, like, things could be improved. And I think for a right. man, I think I, for a man, it does. I mean, you're the one who's always saying the penis does the, pe- no, that's, pe- that's Patty. That's Patty Stinger. Um, you're, but you're saying, like. <laughs> You have another term for it. Right. But if the penis isn't interested, you're not going. Right. The penis doesn't let you out of the house. Yes. You know, but this guy, it's, 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 it kind of goes back to the first one of the guys sending like girthy cock. Like, I'll fuck you, but let me figure that out. I'll figure out the rest later. Right. And for this guy, he's like, oh, I could get there, but let me, how do I figure out the rest? And it's like, it's fucked up. Right. Yeah. I think the issue is like, listen, what happens I, when I don't think the thought th- is, I don't think the thought is so impure that none of us have ever That's the it. Well, that's why it's, I have empathy for it. Like, right. this is a thought that he felt comfortable writing into here that it's more human than anyone wants. To yeah. It's very easy for someone to go, my word. I mean, how many people have we all met where we're like, especially for me or for women, I think like amazing personality. I'm just not attracted. I wish I was. Right. The, and, that's a thing. Yeah, but you've got that to go exists. with it. If she wants to, like, you can't change someone that's that you're setting yourself up to be a monster if you actually do that. Right. I, to I, actually do it, to have the thought is not impure. To actually think that you are, can do it or try to facilitate it right. is fucked up. Yeah, go try and say to someone, I live an active lifestyle. I could help you. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're saying that to someone that wasn't going to fuck me. Well. I can help you. And then I'd fuck you. Could you have you gotten more attracted to a woman after knowing her personality physically? Um, I guess I've become more attracted to women that I've trusted more. Right. You know that I've like. Could you date a woman who you felt this way about? No, I I wouldn't want to deal with the grossness of my own thoughts on that. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like. I don't know. It's it's hard. I kept thinking of this like, would I be okay with someone doing this to me? If they were like, I could get him to my... Well, his, if I started dating Jared, well, then I'd like get rid of that apartment, get rid of that clothing. I mean, that's hats, what, that is what a lot of, of women do. But yeah. they, but, and yeah. I would be like, what did you like here? Right. 
did you like anything? And I'll get them to shut up a little bit. Well, again, I think you know, women like, are more likely to do this because there's this feeling of like, I need to meet someone in a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, I can work with this. Right. Like, I can I work with right. this. That's I can, a, it's a, it's a fixer upper. I can right. work with this where I'm, I actually think men are almost like more romantic. They're like, if I'm not into her exactly how she is, why would I be with her? Right. I can just find someone well, who that, I do like exactly how they are. This is the male story people like to hear. I saw her walk in the room and I was instantly just blown away and I had to meet that woman. Mm -hmm. It's a very male story. That they tell other men? Yeah, well, that they tell publicly. Right. Travis Kelsey, to bring it back to him, Jason Kelsey, his his brother said this. About? The, about his wife. About his wife. It was like quoted. It was reported. I had to meet her. Right. But they had like swiped each other on Tinder earlier. So it was like he's really like dressed this thing up. He's our story. It. Yeah. He's right. totally our, our story. To, you know, so and now, you know, so I, I don't know. I I think this guy needs to like walk away from it. Maybe, you know, let me bring up this scenario. He says, hey, listen, I don't think we're a romantic match, but it was really a pleasure meeting you. A year goes by. She goes through her rough patch. She comes back. Va, va, voom. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, my God, you look amazing. Yeah, date her then. Date the person that you want to be with when they are what you want them to be. Right. I don't think there'd be anything wrong with that. Would you feel? What if you, you but know, there's also, I, I mean, guess there's that, that's like a trope from like a sitcom. Like, I was the nerd in high school. And now look at me. And now I'm back. I, would I, guess I be upset no one, if someone liked me because I was more was more attracted to me because I was more I felt like I was more attractive. I don't think I'd be upset about that. Right. Would you? Uh, no. If a woman who rejected you when you were 20 pounds heavier, would you be like, I'm fuck you. Like if you didn't like me then, then like. <laughs> But here's the I, other right. thing. You I, might, I don't think I would. I, I guess my confidence would be different. Yeah. I'd you might be feel less secure. Because here's the other thing is like all people do get older and most people become less attractive as they get older. Right. Men and women. So I would be maybe a little worried that they would, um, that I, Stray, that I would where, have to. That, that's their important, right. the, where they put value into. Right. But I also know that like, kind of like you said, like men are a little bit more physical. Right. I this guy's got to bail, but I, I don't know how I feel as the man, as someone. I'm sure people have looked at me and gone, I can work with that. Totally. I think people have done that with me with, like, my career. Really? Like, I think, oh, no, maybe he won't do the stand-up thing forever. He could, things will change. I mean, not now. I'm sure they wouldn't need to say that now, but at one point, maybe. Right. Yeah. So it's like. I don't know. I, if I found that out Do you ever think later, anything about that, about a woman? Like, there's, I can there, change her? If there's one thing, if there's a couple things that changed, she'd be like, great. I could help with that. I never thought I could help. <laughs> <laughs> that's the think, difference. That's the difference. I always was like, if these things were different, then maybe I would, I don't know. Maybe I'd be more serious, but maybe I'd look for another thing that wasn't working out. You know, mm -hmm. like, you know. Well, that, you wouldn't say, you wouldn't try to change her. You'd just leave. Right. That's well, but that's, I think that, but the, this guy, to me, this guy is like looking for ways. Like, I think he would always find something about her. Right. Well, that's a him problem then, yeah. Right. I think this is more a him problem than he wants to admit. Right. Because I can understand that. Because I've said that with many people I've dated. Well, you know, I wish that there would, there was this other thing that would make me jump into it. Right. Well, and I mean, then there's never that thing. So it's me. Right. It's not them. Right. right. It was never them. Well, it kind of reminds, you know, it's like, they didn't they have this exact scenario on like Friends with Monica and Chandler? What was that it? He wasn't a track. He was like that she was. Uh, this is he the was, trope. You know, he was yeah. Ross's friend and like they went, he went home to see her and she was like a lot heavier mm -hmm. and he wasn't attracted. And then he saw her years later and she was like, looked like Monica. Mm hmm. Um, <laughs> As we know her from right. the show. The Monica we know and love. And like that was a whole, I forgot how like they really put well, they that they ended to up bed. getting married yeah. too. I've seen Friends too many times okay. to Give not us know exactly what, ha what, what you're talking what about. What happens exactly? It was the Thanksgiving episodes. Yes. Yes. So that's like an art um, Chandler. But um, yeah, the first time that they meet at Thanksgiving, um, it's like Monica is heavier. She had like um, like eating problems when she was younger and she was always overweight. She thought Chandler was cute. They had the weird hair 80s band thing right yes. and seagulls. yeah next year then um like it's another thanksgiving break he comes back monica is super fit 
and right. she cuts off his pinky toe on accident yes, because as she gets like flustered okay. um, when he starts to hit on her in the kitchen. Right. So that was the storyline. She but like then, forgot the toe when they went to the But then she room. overhears him saying something to, I don't know if it was Ross, about calling him like her, your fat yeah. sister. He, he mentions the fat sister. Um, mm. And so that's when she becomes like aware. And Rachel's like, oh, you got back at him, though. You look so much better. It was like a revenge body moment. Right. But then at the end of the day, they wind up together. So, like, I guess she could get over it, someone finding her. Right. I'm sure there's people out there that find that storyline, like, problematic as hell, too. Like, I'm sure, like, that, like, blog has been written. Yeah, I think she had that, like, there was, like, their storyline when they're married is, like, her insecurity is, like, if she gets like fat again or she mm. gains weight or something is right. that going to be a problem is he going to run yeah i think that would right. probably worry me but that might also worry me if even if i didn't used to be i mean that's right, I think that a that common age. fear in every maybe more for women than for men um that you're going to be older or you're going to have a kid and your your body's going to change and the person's going to be less attracted to you mm. it's uh, well you would have to think that you'd Hope that doesn't happen. I don't know. Right. Like, it's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? That's the scary part about yeah. getting married. Is yeah. like you know to bring it all the way back to the beginning of like you know. But I think, but going I mean, into adulthood versus like sticking around in Childville. Right. Childville is this guy being too afraid to like go forward with someone he kind of he really likes as a person. Right. But because also, he's like, well, what if I'm not attractive? If and when. But he's not attracted now. And right. I think that's, that's why kind you don't start that way. Thing. And I think, you know, we talked about this on oversharing, too. You mentioned it at the beginning of the episode. Like, you have to have, like, that honeymoon phase. Even if people grow and change and become, you know, worse looking versions of themselves or something, I do think there is something to having that initial phase of you're, like, lusty, can't keep your hands right. off each other thing. And if he doesn't feel that with her, I think he's not interested in dating her. Let's play some games. Ready? Let's do it. Red flag or deal breaker. Really good ones this week, I gotta say. The yes. whole, the whole, all this stuff. Candace crushing it. He, feather, feather. I have a red flag or deal breaker for you. Recently, I met a guy on Hinge. We chatted back and forth for a little while until he asked me to grab drinks and dinner. This week, I said I'd love that. He suggested a location. For example's sake, say he said, "How's the West Village?" Okay. I said, sure. He picked a spot and I'm going to meet him there tonight. But now I've realized on his profile that the location he chose is one neighborhood away from him. While it's across the city from me, I need to leave 45 minutes early to get there on time. Plus, it's a weeknight and obviously women take longer to get ready than men. One argument for him is that he picked the spot because it's somewhere that he's comfortable with and has been to several times before. Also, he did ask me if the location was okay and I could have countered. So for me, it's only a red flag, but definitely a note in his file if the date goes well and he does this again for date two. So red flag or deal breaker, he picks a first date spot that is way more convenient for him. Um, I think she's like doing too much testing of this guy. A lot of testing. I'm happy you said this. Like, if you I don't want could... she could have said, even when, even afterwards, I didn't realize it was actually, like, so far. Can we meet in the middle? Right. I Speak up for yourself. Oh, she, and then she's Why like, does he have to guess right. the emotional has, roller coaster you're going on? I'll put this in his file, and if the date goes well, and he does this again for day two, like, why would you let it happen day I wish two? I, I wish I could turn myself into a pigeon <laughs> and fly to this date, and then, like, look up at him and go, ooh, end it. Ooh. <laughs> And You're already being tested. Right. Yeah. You get, the, get get out. <laughs> Ooh, get out. <laughs> Ooh, ask her if she'll suck your girthy cock, <laughs> and then leave. Because <laughs> they, they, yeah, to me this is this is actually she's she's she, she seems. I I would rather yeah. date anyone in the world than this person. I I. Uh, <laughs> Right. I, okay, I do, to, okay. To, to be play, nicer to, to her, I to, agree. Like, listen, when you say right. no, but the, he, it is the nice. most important part is of this email her. is that he asked her, and she says, "For example's sake." No, that's the most important thing. The way he said it, "How's the West Village?" He said, "How's the West right. Village?" Let's let's just make that the truth. He goes, "Hey, nice to meet you. This is such a nice conversation. We'd love to get a drink and let's do dinner." And he and she's like, "Great. How's Tuesday at eight work? Great. How's the West Village sound?" Awesome. I'll pick a spot in that area. Right. Like, 
easy breezy beautiful cover girl yeah. like this is like crazy and here's the other thing is that he doesn't actually know her yet so he doesn't no. owe her anything no so and he's suggesting a place that's convenient for him if she if, if she said actually how's the upper west side and he said no fuck off that would be rude right but if he was like oh what about something in the middle i don't think someone needs to like try intensely to impress you if they don't even they never even met you yet right and this was such the way and especially the way it was presented right and she says it's not his area. It's an area away from his area. So he, it's not like he was like, meet me downstairs from my apartment right. so you can suck my girthy cock later. Right. You know, like, the, to me... The, the, like, the woman in the first email would have loved to have gotten this, this exchange. Right. <laughs> but to me, this is why this is so enraging to me. This is why I want to turn into the pigeon. Right. Because when you say, well, this will be on his permanent record... It's like he doesn't, if I know, my, he doesn't even know he's like uh, fucked here. Right. If I, <laughs> in my in my mind, I'm batting a thousand. I'm crushing it. Right. So then, if I read my record and it was like went to a date one town away from his own town, I'd be like, this was on the record. Right. How far away am I from an argument? And again, like she didn't suggest something closer to her. I'm you said nothing. Yeah, that's why it's a test and like. The more it's funny because she's like the more she thinks the empowering move is to like watch him and put it in his file and test him. It's like mm. the more empowering move is to go to the area that you want to go to. Yeah. How's the West Village? You know what? It takes me like 45 minutes to get to the West Village. Is there an area that's maybe a little closer? I'm on the Upper East. Can you do, I can you do East Side? Would that work for you? Hey, no problem. I'll right. pick a spot on the East Side. So, Lower East Side. Good. Yes. Thank you so much. Wow. Now we're communicating. Right. Now we're now we're getting to know each other. Yeah, she's annoying. Ooh, neither red flag or deal breaker. <laughs> You're the deal breaker. <laughs> we turned it on her. Let's do another. Okay, he refollows an ex on Instagram. <gasps> Hi, Jane. Jane, love the pod. Let's get to it. Me, 34, and my boyfriend, 35, have been doing long distance due to his job. We've been together for a year and a half. A year of that being long distance. Lately, he's been going a little dark on weekends and saying he's falling asleep instead of calling me on our nightly Facetimes. He's in danger. Uh, I get it. His job is stressful and has long days. He's a new doctor out of a fellowship. But can't you can't take five seconds to call me? So five seconds. You know how FaceTimes are. Hi. <laughs> Good night. Five seconds. Yeah. I've never <laughs> literally the over under on a FaceTime. Like for, I've, yeah. FaceTimes are like half an hour <laughs> at least. That's how you get your curls done. <laughs> Holding the phone up. So, because I'm anxious, I looked at his Instagram following. I saw that he refollowed a girl who he was speaking to slash planning dates with before he met me because his job was moving towards her area. I love that she said refollowed. Like, she's been following. That's how crazy. And I'm not, again, I've done this too. So, right. I'm putting myself in, in with her. But she's like, he refollowed. So, she followed. She knows that he used to follow. <laughs> she knows that he unfollowed. And now she knows that he refollowed. Um, and, and in her mind... She's like, thank God I looked. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so he 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 refollowed a a girl who was speaking to slash planning dates with with before he met me because his job was moving towards her area. Once we made it official between us, I told him it made me uncomfortable. He follows her, and he had no issue clicking unfollow. Okay, so she's done the right. She's she checked all the uh, unfollow boxes. Fast forward to me seeing that on Instagram. I can't help but feel hurt and disrespected. No, and, no. To go back to her oh. email, he she asked him to unfollow her. Yeah. Okay, that makes it, that makes it less crazy. Now yes. he's refollowed. Now it's less crazy. Yes. He, she saw someone she didn't like from his past. Fair. She asked him to unfollow. He goes, works far away from home. All of a sudden, he's following again. And right. he's not FaceTime. That is important. It Fair. is important. Yes. But I think it would be important even if she happened to notice on her own. Oh, absolutely. All of this is fucked. Right. Yeah, she seems less crazy. <laughs> yeah. Fine. You're right. Or more. I don't know. Fast forward to me or more crazy because she asked. Bless you. Bless you. I'm trying Thank to think you. if I would ever ask. I don't think I would ask. Someone to unfollow someone? I don't think I would ask him to unfollow someone. That seems a little insane. I can understand it. I can understand where you're like, why is this person at the top of your search bar? Why is this right. person? Who are they? Oh, we were trying to, we were kind of talking. Okay, do you talk to them still? No. So then why do you have to keep up with their life? You never even went on a date. Would like I, I, I would go, yeah, I'll unfollow. I, right. I, I can. Under you make a good point. But right. if they were liking and engaging, I think that would annoy me more. But if they happen to un to follow, I don't. I'd feel weird being like controlling the per the people that someone 
Right, but there's a way like, to Do I need get... you to clean your Facebook friend history? <laughs> there is a way to get to this conversation that doesn't involve him liking every picture. It could be that she just sees the search bar. The search bar is a big one. Right. If you should come, if they come up a lot. The first name on the right. search. Why is she still there, you know? Yeah. Fast forward to me seeing that on his Instagram. I can't help but feel hurt and disrespected. Am I overreacting for thinking this is inappropriate or something could be going on? Thanks for all you do. Anxious and confused. She's not wrong. I, I agree. This goes back to the Esther Perel episode where it's like we talked about like, do I you look through my phone like she doesn't have to talk about how she knows the following count and not following right. count. You feel underserved as a long distance girlfriend. Yes. And great point. This is uh, that's the problem. Yes. It's not about these little symptoms of the issue. If anything, these are reasons for you to be more turned off to maybe end it. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it's a reason enough. I think the reason enough is like, hey, if we're going to be doing a long distance relationship, I need like FaceTime. I got to feel loved. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that you don't seem to be caring that much about like staying connected. I think it's staying connected again. <laughs> right. Um, Like I'm looking to stay connected if I'm in a relationship that's long distance. You don't seem to be putting in that effort. Right. And then I went and searched your the girl that you always said you were going to unfollow and you followed her again. Right. And you know why I searched? Because I'm a crazy bitch. That's who. And that's that's, that's, that's who I me. am. That's who you yeah. date. I I don't think there's really like a court in the world that would not side with her. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like so it's shady. It's shady shit. Right. And if there's again, if something's long distance, you need like more than you would if someone's sitting yeah, next to you. You need commitment to the plan. Right. And this ain't a plan. I think so it's a deal breaker. You're saying it's a deal breaker. Yeah. That he, that he followed or or the whole thing? It's the whole thing, but the follow is like nail in the coffin to right. me. What if they live together and it was the refollow? Um, I'd have to have serious conversations. Why are you doing this? Right. Fair. Let's do one more. J&J, big fan of the pod. Love all the conversation, relatable stories. I'd love to hear both of your thoughts on something. I'm a late 30s female. I used to be pretty or very wild and slept around a lot. I don't feel particularly shameful about this and somehow rode out those years without acquiring any babies or STIs. What a success story. If I incurred any damage, it happened in a blackout, so it doesn't <laughs> count. Love it. Wow. She <laughs> sounds hot. <laughs> she sounds like a good time. Yeah, why? <laughs> why am I so into her? Uh, now that my life is a little more settled, I've found it difficult to know how open I can be around my past. Uh, I, it's difficult to know how open I can be about my past with men when things start to get more serious. Even though women are allegedly allowed to be players too, I can't help but feel like used goods in some men's eyes. I tend to play, uh, downplay my experiences. I'm not only talking about sex, but rather my former lifestyle in general. I worry it's just unattractive or sets inaccurate expectations about what I may be looking for. Is this an ina- is this an antiquated idea? I feel like more and more I avoid talking about myself at all, and I have been told I can be standoffish. I, if anything, I think I am trying too hard to come across as hard to get, and that's frankly stupid and exhausting. I may be overthinking this because my last serious boyfriend would call me a slut pretty often. Oy. Wow. Uh, So maybe the real answer is that I should avoid him specifically. (laughs) So in your opinion, how important is the backstory? Uh, A reformed bitch. What do you think, Jordan? I mean, that's awful that someone that uh, clearly that's where her complex is from. from Right. Person who and I think anyone who does that is very insecure about their own situation, which is why they would say that to someone else. I do think that her own her own like her own phrasing and her own analysis of this time period is like how she's going to bring it to anyone else Mm -hmm. and so the way she like the first part of the email sounded like great like i love that like i you know i i had a lot of fun i've been like i dated i've had a very active lifestyle i got i i go out i've dated i've done all these things like to me there's nothing wrong with that it's like the way that she's like packaged it after that sounds like just like an like a not a great way to package something like you can package the same thing in right. a fun, exciting way. Like, oh, I used to travel. I was like, I'm a, I've, in my 20s, I've traveled a lot. I like dated a lot. I was like always going out. Like, I don't think you need to say, and I like fucked everyone. Like that's kind of implied. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But I think it's like, if you're like, yeah, I lived. Like I've been living like a real active, fun lifestyle. That sounds fun. Let if me- you're like, I've slept with a lot of people and I, you know, thankfully I got away with somehow not uh, getting a disease. Like that right. doesn't sound as fun. 
I'm with you. I I'll even take it further. Like, I you know, I don't think that I if someone was like, yeah, listen, I dated a lot. I had a lot of fun. I don't. I just don't want to like be someone's, you know, born again moment. Okay. <laughs> Because this happens sometimes, too. It goes another way. And she does kind of reference it. Like, I don't want to, like, give false expectations. It's like... Right. And I don't She wants people to know that she's actually looking to, like... Right. And I I think that's more of an issue in the beginning than it is, like, who you end up with. Mm -hmm. Like, I... Listen, I'm 39. For me not to expect someone to have a past is insane. It would be insane. Probably preferred. I want them to have a past. Right. I, you know, I want them to have, and I want them to be like, if so, if someone, if I date someone, they're like, I'm sexually adventurous. I'd be like, that's a plus. That's amazing. Right. And you know, I want to share that with whoever my serious partner is. Boom. We're on the same page. If someone says to me, you know, I used to, I used to really be out. And this happens sometimes mm-hmm. in, in lesser forms, but it's like, Oh, I was out there. I date every night, new guy, new this, new that. And, but with you, I could never do that stuff with you. And you're like, what? Right. Well, they want you, they basically, I think, aren't when they're doing that, they're kind of like, I don't want you to think that I'm just looking for casual. Right. I, I think there's like this weird. Like I'm a girl who just hooks up and then you never see her again. It's a thin line. Right. You know, like it's like you can, I just because you have doesn't mean you will. Right. That is, that is something we've said here a lot. And just because you've had casual partners doesn't mean you're looking for casual partners. Just because you were sexual in your past relationships, you know, with different people and, and experienced different things, doesn't mean you can't do that with one person and have a fun time with that one person. Right. You know, so it's a hard thing to like communicate. I agree, but it's also like the I I, I don't think, you know, it would never be a deal breaker to me, like. Like the number thing, how many partners you've been with? I've never even asked that question. I think it's a stupid Same. question. I think anyone stupid. who asks that question after the age of like twenty two is is insecure. Yes, right. Like, and and I don't even know what's right to them. You know, who are they to say what the number is? That right, so that they can the judge you. Right. It's like yeah. go fuck yourself. You right. know. So, oh, is that a number? Number? Would I fuck myself? You know. So it's like I I don't. So I I mean to her, it's like I think you have to admit. Everyone has a past, and I I enjoyed myself. Again, right. the packaging. Yeah, I had a great time. I would date people. I, I... narrowly escaped multiple <laughs> uh, sexually transmitted infections. Right, <laughs> like I don't. Right. I think there's like a fun way to to. Right. How would you pack? I... How would you want it to be packaged to you? Um, I was out there dating. I had a really fun time. Uh, but all that led me to the person I'm with today, and the person I am today. Right, they're not with anyone. They're looking. Right, to... <laughs> the, the, all that led me to the person I am today. And you know, I. What are you looking a, for now? Uh, and I'm now I'm looking to be in a serious relationship. And then I think there are two different conversations. Like one's about sexuality, and one is about what, what you're, you're looking, looking for. for. Right. And I think so it's okay you get to separate jump, the two. You get them together, and it gives you pause when they're together. I think when they're together, you're confusing the messaging. Right. Oh, I was this big time, you know, fun, fun okay. person, and now I'm just. Sister Mary, and I must find my right. man that can keep me. You know, we can knit together. It's yeah. like I don't know. I, I mean, don't. I think agree. That... It's a, it's a tough thing to to straddle because I do think you don't want to seem so fun that's all someone sees in you is fun. Right. I I don't know. I think you could be fun and looking for a serious relationship at the same time. Right. And I think this person needs to remember that. Right. So separate them. Try. Right. You wouldn't think if someone said, I have had a lot of fun, I've been, I've dated a lot that I've, you know, enjoyed my single time. You wouldn't, there's no part of you that would be like, all right, this person might be better, ca- like better casual. No, I, I, I don't think anyone's, I don't come in thinking anyone's looking for casual. <laughs> <That's> smart. <laughs> right. Like That's I kind of think your default, but is I, my default not, right? is like, again, to go back to the beginning of this podcast, the default and what these men are trying to avoid is the default of like, Hey, we'll go on a date and see where this goes. Mm-hmm. You know, when the guy is writing to you, "Hey, touch my girthy cock," on the app, he doesn't want to see where this goes. He has one way this could ever go. Right. So for her, you want to go on dates with people that hopefully lead towards serious. And you've been casual in the past, but that's not really what you're looking for anymore. And that has nothing to do with 
your sexual experience. But I don't, yeah, like, uh, you know, I, I think when you say, like, I've been with all these people, please take me. Um, I, I, the use goods thing, I, I'm yeah. not, not into that. I wouldn't, not, I wouldn't not, label yourself that. No. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't put that on someone else that they think that. Right. No, like, I don't think, I think most people, again, if, if they do think that, I think that they are insecure. I'm a uh, late 30s female. You dated someone else? <laughs> you fucked? You know, like, it's... Grow up. Right. But I understand she's gone, she's coming out of right. this, like, abusive, really abusive, yeah, like, like that, really yeah. shitty guy doing that to her. And it's like, no, this, the baseline is like, oh, cool, you, yeah, I'm sure you dated other people. Right. I'm not looking to hear so much about it. Like, That's what I'm saying. I wouldn't like talk about the sex necessarily. Not like in a right, but it, like a, it can go that way. Right. But I'm saying like I wouldn't like lead with that. Right. In terms of I don't think anyone <laughs> wants to hear that. I wouldn't want to hear about a guy, all the women he's fucked. Right. You see that knapsack on your back? I could hold all the cocks I've sucked. <laughs> <laughs> and Earthy balls. ones too. And balls. And balls. <laughs> don't for all you ball queens out there. We solved dating again in a very quick 93 minutes. We um, did it. I'm proud did, of us. One of our long, we've been really yapping. We were lately. trying to make this one succinct, so we did it. We tried, uh, not Fails. great. Uh, Fails. So listen, we'll be back next uh, on Sunday. Bye. The You Up Podcast is produced by Jorge Morales Pico, Sean Kilby, and Candice Maniga. Editing by Jorge Morales Pico and Shannon Sassone. Social media by Candice Maniga. Guest booking by Ali Friedlander. Be sure to follow at you.up.podcast on Instagram and send us your emails to uup at betches.com. Yeah.